Hello again, and by now hopefully you've built uh, at least one model rocket, maybe more, and you need to get ready to fly them. Most model rockets are set up in pretty much the same way. Uh, there are some minor changes depending on whether it has a, a parachute or a streamer or uses featherweight or tumble recovery. But for the most part, um, all of these rockets set up in pretty much the same way. First of all, you're going to need some motors, and if you're using the, the commonly available Estes motors, these also come with the necessary igniters or starters, uh, and usually a little bit of wadding as well. And we'll go into what each one of those does here in just a moment. So here's a typical package of rocket motors. These are B44 motors that I'm going to use for the uh, Duck Dodger series of rockets. Check your model rocket kit information to find out what motors are recommended for your particular rocket. Um, in general, if you're flying on a small field, you want to use A or B engines. If you're looking for maximum altitude and you have a very large flying area, go ahead and use those C engines. Uh, but most models will also indicate uh, a recommended engine for a first flight to make sure that your rocket is properly balanced and aerodynamic. Within the package here, as we open it up, um, are a few other small items that you don't want to lose as you open this up. Okay, so there will be a, a little string of motor plugs here and those will be used to hold the igniters in place. And that's what these things are. Uh, these are called igniters or starters. And these consist of a little tiny filament of wire that's at the very tip of these that when electric current flows through that will glow red hot. And that's coated with what's called a pyrogen here. It's just a heat sensitive chemical that will burst into flames uh, when that little filament within the igniter glows. And this is what will actually ignite the propellant inside the rocket motor. And usually it comes with enough to have a spare. Uh, in my experience these things usually don't misfire if they're placed correctly, but in case one does you do have a spare one in there. Okay, and then we have the motors themselves inside here. Uh, in some packages, this will also come with some wadding, what's called recovery wadding here. Um, if not, you can buy this separately. Uh, Estes makes some, and uh, a few other companies make some that look a little bit different, but they all do the same general thing, and that is to prevent the hot gases from the ejection charge from melting the parachute or the streamer inside the rocket. So the SD style um, looks like toilet paper, actually. Uh, this is tissue paper that's been treated with a flame retardant. And uh, like toilet paper, actually, is perforated so that you can peel this off and break it up into squares, depending on how big your rocket is. All right, so uh, I'm going to bring in a couple of rockets here and show just a few differences between them and how to set them up. All right, the first rocket we're going to look at here is the Quest Starhawk. This is a streamer type rocket. Um, and this is unusual compared to the Estes type rockets in that it uses uh, a, a shock cord that consists of both a, a non-elastic Kevlar part here and then an elastic part on the top. And the streamer is connected to a little sticky tab here that then rests up against the knot of the uh, two shock cords there. Now, one thing that you want to be careful with with streamers is a lot of people think you should roll a streamer up. And that's not really a good idea. It's better to fold these. So if you start with the entire length here, and then just fold it in half. And you just keep folding it in half again. And it doesn't have to match perfectly. Okay, um, And then at the very end you can kind of give it a little bit of a roll here. 
The reason I say we shouldn't roll these from the end up is one, it's really tedious and takes a long time to do. Uh, but also, if we do get a little bit of uh, hot gases getting around the recovery wadding, and you melt this, um, it tends to remain a big wad, more so if you roll it than if you fold it. Um, if you get enough hot gases in there, it'll be a big wad anyway, which is why we have recovery wadding here. So the first thing we're going to do before we put any of this together is simply loosely wad this up and then stuff it down inside. And this is a close to a minimum diameter rocket, so you won't need a whole lot. Okay, so two squares is probably enough. Um, and it's in this case, it's better to use two pieces rather than one big piece. And then what I like to do is use one more square of the wadding and just loosely pack that around the streamer, giving it a little bit more protection there. Okay, and then stuff that whole thing in. Okay, and this should move freely. You don't want it so tight that it, you have to really force it in. If it is, you need to refold that and try once more. And now I'm just folding up the remaining shock cord here and just loosely stuffing it in. Okay, and then your nose cone should go on and fit snugly, um, but not so snug that it can't get out uh, relatively easily. You don't want it to wobble around, so a good thing to do is just shake your rocket like this. If the nose cone comes out, it's too loose. And that's actually why I've got this little piece of masking tape here, uh, because my original nose cone was a little bit too loose, and so I can snug it in like this. A little piece of shot cord back in there. Uh, if, on the other hand, that your nose cone is really tight and doesn't have any tape on it, in that case you can take a little bit of sandpaper and sand around the shoulder here uh, until it's loose enough to pop out, but not so loose that it, that it comes out on its own. Okay, so that's a streamer rocket. Uh, here's a, a fairly typical parachute rocket. This is the, the SD's uh, generic E2X. Uh, I've got a little bit bigger one here. This is uh, the Cadet Cruiser, part of the Duck Dodger series made by MPC. Uh, I'm going to use this one just because it is a little bit larger here. And so you can see what to do with a, a bigger rocket. I'll pull this open. And inside I've got my parachute. And, and this uses a standard elastic shock cord here. Uh, now since this is... Um, so you see down in there. This is a wider rocket. It's going to take more parachute wadding or recovery wadding here to ensure that. So I'm going to take uh, an entire sheet here of three squares and I'm going to loosely wad that up and stuff that down inside. Okay, so you can kind of see it down in there. And then for the parachute here, um, like with the streamer, a lot of people have the idea that you should roll a parachute up. Um, and the problem with doing that, especially if it's been sitting in the rocket for a long time, is it doesn't want to come unrolled again. And this is especially true if you're firing uh, in fairly cool weather, um, or again, if you do get a little bit of leakage of hot gases up here and you get some partial melting of the parachute, um, then that'll tend to, to bind the whole thing together. Instead of a parachute, you just have this wad of plastic coming down. And so what I prefer to do is, first of all, just take the parachute here, and if it's unfolded, it looks like this. All right, and gather it all together, and I just grab it in the middle and just kind of pull my hand down through like that. Okay. Um, if you like to be a little bit more uh, neat about it, you can actually take it out and fold it into triangles over on itself, like this. Okay, uh, But either way, it will generally work well. And then what I'm going to do here is pull up all of my shroud lines from about a third down and bring those up into the parachute like that. Okay, And then you can either just fold this over on itself or you can fold it twice like this, kind of. All right, and I'm going to fold it once in half this way. 
and then again lengthwise. Okay, so what this does is when this gets ejected out, these shroud lines are going to come out fairly easily, and the whole parachute then will unfold in the wind like that. If it were rolled up, it would have to unroll first, um, and then hopefully inflate before it hit the ground. And so this just allows that parachute to come open much more readily and easily. Um, even if you have a little bit of gas leakage there, or if it's cool and the, the parachute just wants to try and stay folded up. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this together again. Once more here. Okay, I'm going to fold this down. Okay, and then just fold these over. All right, and then like I did with the streamer, I like to take another square of recovery wadding here. Um, and since this is a fairly big parachute, I'm going to use two squares. Okay, but I'm just going to encase this in some wadding, like this. Okay, and now I can take the, the rest of the rocket here and just scoot this whole thing in. And again, this should not be really tight. Um, this is a nice big rocket, so you've got lots of room in there. Now, you may notice here that I've got a snap swivel on this, and this is simply so I can take the parachute out of the rocket um, if I'm storing it for a long period of time. That way, uh, if I want to change it out, maybe use a, a smaller one or a bigger one, I've got that option. Um, if your rocket doesn't have this, don't worry about it. It's just a little bit of extra stuff you can put on there. And then just like I did with the previous one, we're just going to stuff the extra shock cord loosely down inside. And once more, apply the nose cone. Okay, now I'm going to do the, the shake test here. Now notice, my nose cone is coming out. Okay, so I need to add a little bit to that. I'm just going to take a little bit of masking tape here. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to go all the way around the shoulder of the nose cone. I usually start with about half of a circumference worth here. All right, and then we'll put that back on. Okay, and that already feels just a little bit snugger. Is that word snugger? Okay, uh, and now it doesn't shake open. So that one's ready to go. Okay, and then uh, other rockets here like the, uh, the generic E2X, you're going to prepare that in much the same way. Uh, I'm not going to do each one of these here on the video. Okay, but this is another parachute rocket. It's got a smaller parachute here than the Cadet Cruiser did. But we're going to prepare this in just the exact same way. So you'll put a few uh, squares of crumpled wadding into the body tube. Okay, we're going to fold this. You can do a series of triangles, basically. Okay. Bring those shroud lines up, fold that over, and then again kind of fold it lengthwise until it fits inside. Now I haven't put any recovery wadding in this one yet. Okay, and then just like before, just loosely put the remaining shock cord down there. All right, and you can see here I've added a, just a little piece of masking tape here. It's not even half circumference. It was just enough to give me some friction here. And this can change. Uh, so you know, if you originally built your rocket in cold weather and you're testing this and you decided you needed some tape, um, as the weather warms up, different parts of the rocket expand or contract in different ways and so it may be that now it's too tight and you need to take that tape off. So check that every time you load up a rocket there. Okay, um, the next thing we'll do is then put the engines in and I'll show a few differences here between the rockets on how to do that. Alright, I've got four different rockets here. Um, actually five, if I throw that one in. Um, and these all have slightly different motor mounts to them. Uh, so if we look at the first two here, the Starhawk and the, the generic E2X, these are very similar 
Um, the only difference is if you look at them from the end on, uh, since the, the Starhawk is a, a near minimum diameter, there's not a lot of space in between the motor mount and the body tube, whereas the, the E2X generic uh, does have a bit more room in there. So in both of those, uh, we simply take a motor, okay, and you want to make sure that the nozzle end here, um, the, the partially capped end with the hole in it, this needs to go to the, the back side or after the rocket. And usually this is just a matter of pushing this clip out of the way. Okay, it's got some spring to it. And then just pushing this inward until this clips back into place. Up inside the, the motor mount, um, in most of these you've got the other end of this clip that, that pushes inward and that helps block the motor. And in most cases there's also a thrust ring uh, just next to that that's also helping keeping that motor in place. Okay, so that's all there is to that particular style. Um, the same is true on the generic E2X here. Again, just push that clip over out of the way and then put the motor in uh, until it stops. Now, something to check when you're doing this as well, uh, especially on these rockets that have a plastic fin can that inserts up into a, uh, a paper or cardboard tube here, is it's always difficult to glue between the plastic and the cardboard. So I always like to check Okay, and make sure that we're not loose here, and we are. Now, in the case of this particular rocket, um, if this turns, that's not necessarily mean there's a problem. Uh, because if you've built this one, you'll know there's a big cardboard sleeve up here that's actually locking this whole thing in place. So even though this is turning, um, that's not a safety problem for this particular rocket. Okay. Now, if you are concerned about it, you can take a little bit of super glue and just seep it along the seam right here. Um, since it won't pull out, there's nothing for you to, to really glue on there. You do want to make sure that the fins um, are still not going to interfere with the launch lug here where you put the rocket on. Okay. Now, these two of the, the Duck Dodgers rockets here, um, they have very similar types of engine hooks uh, like we just saw, except, you know, these ones really stick out here. Um, and for the most part, that's not going to be a big deal. Okay, it, just, it's, it looks a little funny, um, but it works in the same way. So you just push it over until that clicks into place. Okay, and just make sure it's good and firm there. And again, check, I always want to check these, these plastic to, to paper fittings there and make sure that those are still in place. Uh, every so often I'll see that someone flies something like this and um, the ejection charge goes off and it pops this off the back instead of blowing the nose off and releasing the parachute or streamer. Okay, so check there. Um, otherwise that one's pretty much the same. Okay, um, this guy here, the, the X2 Invader, you just have to be a little bit careful as it's got these decorative nozzles on it. Um, but this is going to go in the same way. All right, now uh, we've got a problem in here. Okay, that the uh, motor mount is loose, and so is the rest of it. So we've got a glue failure here, um, probably because the, the plastic model cement did not bind well between the, the paper of the motor mount here and the paper of this. Okay. Now, if this happens to you, don't panic. Uh, it does mean you have to do a little bit of a repair. Um, let's come back to that, though, in just a moment. I do want to show you two other ones. Okay. Some rockets, like the, the largest of the Duck Dodgers one, the Star Traveler, um, have these twist on motor retainers. And these are kind of cool because they, they help give a finished look to the rocket. And these just, you untwist them about a, an eighth to a quarter of a turn and that allows them to come off. Uh, and then you can just 
put the motor in here, remember the, the nozzle has to go in the back, and then this whole thing just slides in, and then you give it about an eighth of a twist to lock that in. And this is really hard to see, this is such a long rocket. Okay, um, but here you can still see the rocket nozzle there, and you'll have lots of room to put in the igniters when we get to that step. Right. Again, this is another one of those rockets that has a, a transition between plastic and paper here. So I'm going to just give that a little twist, make sure it's not going to come loose. Okay. Um, and then this is the Estes Wizard. This is a true minimum diameter rocket. And so the, the body tube is the motor mount. And there's no room for a clip in there. Uh, and so this just fits in. And to keep it from getting blown out the back when it goes off, we just want to add a little bit of masking tape to that. And you want to do that down here at the base of the engine, down at the aft end, not up here in the forward end. If you do it in the forward end, um, it's going to create so much friction that either you won't be able to get the motor in all the way, or you'll get it in and you won't be able to get it out again. Okay. Um, like nose cones, start with about half of the circumference and then add more if you need it. So now I might put this on, and now it slides in. Okay, still kind of loose there. So now I'll add a little bit more to it, and you can just keep building this up. Right around there. Okay, until you get a good snug fit. Alright, so that's fitting snugly in there. It's not going to just pop out again. Uh, and in fact, on a lot of these rockets, it's a good idea to have some uh, thin nose pliers available for after the launch, because you may have some trouble getting that back out again. Right, it's not a big deal if you right now. Something to be careful of, um, don't bang rocket engines around. Okay, so you know, don't drop them as you're going to try and handle them as little as possible. And you actually don't want to load these in until right before launch. Uh, what the thing that can cause model rocket motor failures most often is if the, the powder charge inside of this gets cracked. And that will make it burn too fast and will usually result in a catastrophic motor failure where it usually blows the top out of your rocket before it launches. Okay. Um, one other thing you can do with some minimum diameter rockets uh, if you've got space between the fins and the motor, like the Wizard does here, an alternative or additional way, depending on how paranoid you are, is you can actually put masking tape on the rocket like this. Okay, and then I'm not going to do this too much, but then you want to go ahead and press this down all the way around. Um, and so you basically taped the outside of the rocket to the outside of the motor. And this also gives you a really strong um, binding. The problem here is, depending on how sticky your tape is, you might cause some of the paint to come off here. Okay, but that does give you a really secure way of binding that motor in. Okay, so those are the, the basic types that you'll see. There are variations of all of these, but in general, it's either going to have a clip, a, a twist or screw on retainer, or some sort of friction fit like this. Okay, um, and I'm going to put these aside, and when we come back, we'll, we'll work on what do you do when this happens to your rocket. Okay, now if you don't have a broken rocket or you really don't care about how to fix this, you can just fast forward a few minutes to the, the rest of this video. Um, but if you have run into this situation, uh, what you can do is first of all change the type of glue that you used. Now, this was plastic model cement. And the idea was that it would partially melt the plastic itself, which would then 
hopefully soak into the paper and give us a nice strong bond and it didn't do that so generally what we can do now is use some super glue okay or called cyanoacrylate glue um, this particular formulation here is very thick and so it's good for making repairs like this and what I'm going to do here is um, fix this from both ends so I'm going to apply See, that comes out really thickly there. I'm going to apply a bead around here. And like any of the cyanoacrylate glues, you don't want to get this on skin. Because it will bond instantly. And generally requires acetone to get off. And I'm going to use quite a bit of it here because you're not going to see this on the rocket. Um, so I can be a little bit sloppy. And then I'm going to use a thinner amount on the inside here of the fin can. Now here if I get too much it will start interfering with the motor mount, so we don't want to do that. So now I'm just going to push this back down okay, until I'm once again flush here on the bottom. Uh, and this particular formulation sets up within just a few seconds. So I'm just going to let that sit for just a moment. Um, and while that's going on, I need to do the same thing here with the connection between the fin can and the tube here. And so I'm just going to put a bead. And again, with this stuff, I can be pretty generous with it. tip of the applicator here to kind of smear that around evenly. Um, you do want to be careful. You can see in there the, the parachute is just inside. And you want to make sure you don't glue the parachute to the inside of the rocket. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up just a bit. Okay. Alright, and now I'm going to go ahead and, and put this on. Uh, again, be wary of where your fins are in relation to your launch lug here so that they don't interfere. Okay. And now I can just let that sit for a few minutes and it should be good to go. Alright, my Martian Invader is having its glue dry there. And so the last thing we will do is insert the igniter into here. So you just need to, if these come in pairs, just cut or tear them apart. You only need one of them at a time. And the trick is here that you want this part of the igniter with the pyrogen to be right up against the inside of the engine there. Okay, so that's where the propellant is. And so be careful that you're, you don't have it over here all right, so we don't want the igniter on the same side as the launch lug because it will run into each other. Um, I like to put it at a 90 degree angle if I can. Um, and also keep it away from the retainer clip here uh, because we don't want the metal of the retainer to short circuit the igniter wires here. Okay. And if you remember we had these engine plugs here. Now these are made for specific motors. Okay, so it'll actually tell on the little tag here. Um, this one says A8 and B4. So these only work for those types of engines. Um, something like a, a B6 or a C6 has a different nozzle shape, and so these would not fit into it. Uh, what you need to do is just pull off one of these plugs. Uh, make sure you don't get any of the extra plastic on there. Okay, and I come back to my igniter. So I'm going to put this in. All right, and then I'm just going to bend it slightly so that it's now perpendicular to the motor, like this. And then I'm going to put that plug in here and just push it in gently so it looks like this. Okay, um, and then just spread these wires apart. And now this is ready to go. Normally, we would not put the igniter in until just before we put this on the launch pad. 
Uh, just in case of the very remote chance that somehow that pyrogen goes off, um, and it would take a, a quite a few series of unfortunate events to, to actually get that to do it. But just for safety's sake, and also to make sure that we don't break the igniter. Um, usually we'll do this on the, at the launch site just prior to putting this on the launch pad. Once this is on the launch pad, there will be um, two wire clips that one will simply attach to each one of these wires, and you just want to make sure the wires and the clips don't t touch each other, and then it will be ready for launch. Okay, um, All the rest of these rockets would, would work the same way. The only difference is how the, the engine's actually there uh, and retained in, but you'll apply the igniters and the starter plugs in exactly the same way. Mm -hmm.